Firstly, what is a single pile? Well, a single pile is a pile that when loaded does not have any interaction effects with the adjacent piles and the spacing between the piles often depends on the solution modeled and the ground conditions. But typically, for example, if you consider vertically loaded piles, the spacing is uh, more than three times the, diame uh, the um, diameter of the pile. Um, if you consider maybe, for example, the settlement effects and you're looking at a settlement calculation, the sp pile spacing is typically more than 10 times the diameter of the pile. But alternatively, if you're looking at laterally loaded piles, the spacing really depends on the loading direction with respect, re with respect to other piles. So. Uh, as I mentioned here, it really depends on the kind of analysis you're doing, the kind of piles you have, and everything else, and this should be considered before you start the analysis. What OASIS software can be used to analyze single piles? Well, um, there are three main programs. Um, the first is Pile, which calculates the vertical um, pile capacity and the settlement. Now, um, the settlement side of Pile is actually an incorporation of a program that was previously called Pillset. So Pillset has been put into Pile with exactly the same functionality. And this gives you design outputs such as required length and Pile settlement. We've also got um, ALP, and ALP gives you the behavior of the Pile under lateral loads. And for example, it gives you as a design output moments and cage lengths. And there's AdSec, which analyzes a section of the pile, and um, it carries out a nonlinear concrete and composite section analysis. So this gives stiffnesses and cracking. But it would be nice to see how these programs are used and, and, um, and how industry is using them. So I'm going to start off with a case study from one of our external customers. Um, I'd really like to thank Bern Luby for this case study, and it's... Uh, it's the design of a trans. Uh, uh, it's a pile design for transverse loads by um, Ben Luby and Partners for McCarthy's Level Crossing near Kilmarnock. So, Ben Luby were asked to design the pile foundations for the proposed replacement of the McCarthy's Level Crossing. The piles had to resist a 830 kilonewton ma maximum uniaxial compressive load, and no tension or moment loads were to be transferred to the piles. So the piles were subjected to 175 kilonewton horizontal load per pile from the superstructure. And there was also a rotational stiffness from the pile cap of 175 kilonewton meters per rate. So for the proposed solution, uh, all the piles are designed to be um, bearing in the stiff to very stiff boulder clay. And uh, this was conservatively ignoring the upper 2.5 meters of overburden. And the consulting engineers specified um, to Bern Luby, Luby that the pile should be a minimum of 600 mil in diameter. So now we'll go into the analysis and, and see how Bern Luby dealt with the transverse load first. Uh, Bern Luby used ALP to analyze the transverse lobe, a load, and for the ALP analysis, a rotational stiffness had been taken from the pile cap. All the piles are to be fully tied into the pile cap. So as you can see, the rotational stiffness there is around 50,000. And from the outputs, and this is a complete out output, um, you can see uh, from the pink line, the maximum pile shear force was 175 kilonewtons. Uh, from the red line, the maximum, the predicted movement or head movement is, is around 10 mil, which is good. And um, also you've got a maximum pile bending mo moment of 145 kilonewton meters. And based, if you just look um, as, as you go down the pile, if you look at what's going on at around minus 6.5 meters, as you can see, the values are coming right down there. So um, the pile reinforcement should be installed to a minimum depth of 6.5 meters below the pile cutoff level as per the ALP output. So Bern Luby also used ADSEC to analyze the structural capacity of the pile. The pile reinforcement capacity um, came out with this NM graph, as you can see, this load and moment graph. And if we zoom into it, um, you can see that Bern Luby has looked closely into the ADSEC output. And for the compressive load, as previously mentioned, um, at 830 kilonewtons, the allowable bending moments coming out at around 280 kilonewton meters. So how does this fit in with the actual moment that's occurring from our ALP output? 
Well, our design bending moment is the generated bending moment times a factor of safety. Bern Luby took the factor of safety to be 1.5, and their generated bending moment from ALP was 145 kilonewton meters. So that was on the previous slide. So actually, their design bending moment is 218 kilonewton meters, which is less than the 280 kilonewton meter given by ADSEC um, as our allowable bending moment. So the design is okay. That really helps you understand how ADSEC and ALP are used in conjunction. Now I'm going to touch upon this case study. Um, it's available on the internet in detail, um, but it looks at how um, the whole piling suite can be used together, that is ADSEC, Pile, ALP, and also FRU, to design a retaining wall um, in more complex conditions. So for the UCL hospital um, and the construction of the UCL hospital, there were actually a lot of geotechnical constraints. And for the design of the basement retaining wall, um, the section of the retaining wall running alongside the RAIN Institute had several restrictions. One was the actual proximity physically to the RAIN Institute. Um, they were working in central London, it was very close anyway, but the RAIN Institute was less than a meter away from the retaining wall, so it's very close, and the RAIN, the RAIN Institute piles would also be affected in that way. And due to the requirement to locate a service lift, there are tight space restrictions that affect the actual wall thickness as well. So the Arup engineers proposed to construct a 600 mil diameter hard soft board secant pile wall with mail piles at 750 mil diameter centers and a smaller pile diameter of 600 mil in this area was required but the wall had to be temporarily propped at two levels for that reason. So how did they go about analyzing it? Well, actually, what they did was, um, seeing that movements were so sensitive in this case, and due to the proximity of the RAIN Institute, accurate modeling really was essential. So what they did was they started with an initial pass by modeling the retaining wall construction in FRU. And out of their model, they got horizontal ground movements and vertical stresses. The horizontal ground movements were fed into ALP and the vertical stresses were fed into PILE to look at how the PILE was performing. And on the basis of this, axial stresses were fed into ADSEC and the moments from ALP, so um, if you think about the plot, the moments from ALP were fed into ADSEC. But then an iterative process was had to be taken up between ADSEC and ALP to get a better design. So what happened was that the cracked EI from ADSEC was fed back into ALP and so on and so forth. And um, the Arab engineers actually commented that each of these programs actually deals with a different design methodology. So it's important that they're separate. But at the same time, there's a lot of compatibility because of the gateway interface and the way that they can be used together, copying and pasting between programs and so on and so forth, um, such that it actually made it very easy and very quick to run this analysis and get to a final solution quickly. So, as you can see, here's, here's an output. Um, this shows the settlement, um, uh, pile settlement analysis. And as you can see, we've got um, the limiting shaft skin friction, the shaft skin friction, the pile stress, and pile displacement. So that's all there. So in summary, um, just to cover, just to touch upon everything that we've covered, um, today I've discussed the theory um, and the application of programs to analyze single piles. We've also shown how it can be applied through case studies and gone into the interface and, and uh, just introduced you to the different interfaces. So for pile, it calculates the pile vertical capacity and settlement analysis and the design outputs a required length and pile settlement. For ALP, um, the program calculates pile lateral loads, and you get outputs such as moment and cage length, and outputs such as moment, for example, feed into programs like ADSEC, where you get the nonlinear concrete and composite section analysis, and you get values such as stiffness and cracking. So as this was just an introduction to theory and introduction to the programs, um, it would be helpful for you to go back and have a look at the manual, um, try the step-by-step -step examples, and if you actually don't have the software, download the trial version and try it. Uh, watch the online tutorials and the webinar recordings um, because they will familiarize you with the way the programs are set up, running through the programs, and 
and so on and so forth. And we really, we would really like to hear from you. Um, pop us an email if you have any questions. Feel free to call call us. Uh, we're always at the end of the phone. And also, um, I've included here some helpful links. A recording of this webinar would be made available on the internet, and um, a PDF of this webinar will also be made available. So you can look at these links at your leisure, maybe a week from now.